from Alberta's news source, CBC Alberta News. From Edmonton, Kathy Daly. From Calgary, Bob Nicholson. And Dirks and Connolly with sports. Good evening. It's the kind of testimony you expect in an American courtroom. Fuck you! A, a girlfriend of society photographer Cole, Colin Ballin will testify that her life was threatened by Marilyn Tan. Tan is accused of a accused of injecting Bolin with blood that was contaminated with HIV that causes AIDS. Rick Bagusby has more. He has not entered a plea yet. A 19-year-old boy we told you about last night was a uh, rescue from Manmade Lake in Edmonton died before sunrise. He was the second boy to die from icy spring waters in Edmonton. Lionel Goddard has more. Today, it was over Edmonton Power. The province has introduced a bill that will prevent the company from expanding. Liberal leader Grant Mitchell says he wants his bill put off to the fall. Government says he could reconsider until Edmonton Power is going to give up its tax exempt. It's not to uh, uh, deny Edmonton Power uh, any uh, rights that they now have, it's to uh, curb expansion and, and competition against um, uh, free enterprise uh, power uh, generators. And if Edmonton Power, uh, between now and uh, the end of the year, can demonstrate how they can compete on a uh, level playing field, then uh, we'd be very uh, receptive to, uh, to that. Edmonton's Mayor Jan Reimer says a bill is unfair, discriminatory, and has to be changed. The owner of Sunshine Ski Resorts near Banff is taking the federal government to court. Ralph Sturfield wants to get rid of the new environmental review panel to look at his expansion projects. Kerfield says the pan lacks jurisdiction and duplicates other panels in the past. He wants to add 700 parking spaces, 50 new hotel rooms, and a bigger day lodge at Sunshine. Ottawa West says review panel will continue its review until court tells it to stop. Another body blow for those who work in the oil patch. Petro Canada has announced it's going to lay off hundreds of people in the next few months. Des Kilfoyle has the details. Employees at Petro Never signed an organ donor card. Here's a story that might change your mind. It's a story about a little boy who was not saved once but twice by don donating organs. Thanks, Steve. Well, the weather's threatening. It's it was a sellout cloud and to see the Edmonton Trappers home open home opener in their new home. But they didn't like the long lineups to hot dogs, beer and the Johns. It's excellent ballpark. Very nice, except uh, there's a little lineups in the food. The seats are a lot more comfortable than they had before. It's the best triple A ballpark in North America. Mm. There you have it. Dirks and Conley. Actually Dirks uh, our sports meister Doug Dirks is here alone. He's not uh, Mark Connolly. He's gone tonight. But our sports meister Doug Diehard Diehard blah, 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 Doug Diehard Dirks is here to take a look at the sports. Doug, what's up in sports? Well, the Edmonton Trappers ballpark for one, the Western Conference playoff standings, and this pain in my neck from trying to follow the bouncing puck, and the playoff fortunes of the LA Kings on the road tonight in Winnipeg for what could be the last NHL game in the province of Manitoba. The Trappers and Tacoma Rainiers played the first ever game tonight at Edmonton's new ballpark. Cough up a couple of million, and they might just name it after you. A couple of million pocket change for some of these guys playing a little kid's game and playing it well. Well, most of the time, anyway. And Michael Jordan can certainly afford to build a couple of stadiums of his own, but we'll have to wait and see if MJ can help the Bulls manufacture another NBA title. From Alberta's news source, CBC Alberta News. From Edmonton, Kathy Daly. From Calgary, Bob Nicholson. And Dirks and Connolly with sports. A 911 caller may have the clues needed to solve a murder. Good evening. Police want to talk to emergency hotline caller in hopes in solving a murder of Bruce Hutchinson. The murder, the dead man, is that right to die advocate who was shot to death in his apartment in Edmonton. As Rick Bagusby reports, police are releasing tapes of the call in hopes at catching the killer. Ten. A Tabor man pleaded not guilty today in the murder of store clerk Eileen McCoy. Jeffrey Thurston was charged after the woman was abducted sexually assaulted and shot near Tabor. Thurston also pleaded not guilty in a separate case in Lethbridge. He'll be back in court next month to set a trial date. 
In Calgary, a study conducted of 20 junior and senior high schools suggests there's a big increase in youth violence. Craig Paisley took those findings to one high school and found out the students were not surprised. Walking down the hallway, people will be like, oh, look at that bitch, you know, and let's... TBC News. The retrial of Rod and Teresa Lenny is going to be delayed another four months. The Lennies are convicted of killing five-year-old Jason Carpenter. The boy died in February after being in a coma for three years. He had been severely beaten and burned with cigarettes. A court has ordered a new trial. Tomorrow, in a Calgary courtroom, an inquiry begins of another little boy, a boy that got a blood transfusion against his parents' wishes. His parents are Jehovah Witnesses. Yvonne Butcher reports. John Vers Yvonne Butcher, CBC News, Calgary. Some good news tonight about Alberta's economy. A new survey says Alberta has the fastest growing economy in the country. StatScan says Alberta's economy is advancing by 5.7 percent. It's mostly because of increased oil and gas experts. Premier Ralph Klein says the good news is expected. Uh, you, 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 you have hit the nail on the head. Um, it might be good now, uh, but you know how volatile the energy sector is. So let's not, uh, let's not count on, on the kind of growth that is occurring now in the energy sector to uh, sustain this economy uh, for all time. Meanwhile, another survey says most Albertans say that 60% rate the health care system good or excellent. Three quarters of the people surveyed that 75% say the health care system provided is good or excellent. The government paid $55,000 for the survey. 4,000 people were polled and is considered accurate two percentage points, 19 times out of 20. Albertans were not asked for their opinions on health cuts or restructuring. The government says it's too early for that. No one will be reprimanded, but the Calgary Fire Department says some new rules. The rules changes come after a controlled burn went out of control last Tuesday and came dangerously close to some houses. High winds blowing the 10-acre burn into a five-acre burn. Next time, the spokesperson says the, there will be more firefighting vehicles available and senior officers will be in charge. Calgary's native community is opening its doors and showing off its culture this week. The idea is to let it be known that native people are not just buckskin and beads. I know that it does, you know, it does cause harm. In Red Deer, famed Alberta architect Douglas Cardinal is trying to stop parishioners from building a church hall onto one of his first and most distinguished works, St. Mary's Church. But the church members a simple case of wanting a place of their own to hold parish meetings, pancake breakfasts, and bazaars. For Cardinal, it's, the addition is an insult to his art, and he's gone to court to stop it. Steve Early reports. The people of St. Forecast for the two major urban centers in about 15 minutes. Thanks, Steve. Okay, sports fans, it's time for our sportsmeisters, Doug Diehard Dirks and Mark Diehard Connolly. Okay, guys, what's up in sports for tonight? Is this Vin Scully over here? <laughs> Flames fans will take in a big rebound for Calgary as they win their first game at home in this series. Does this mean you think they can win? Just as I always said they will. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're in sure. flurry leading the Flames to a 5-0 win over the Sharks and their first.